it was. Okay, so I was go. ready to rip my hair out, and I and I, I called Patrice, and I was like, wh- I go, dude, I, I, what do you do? I I don't know, man. I look up to guys like you. I want to do the kind of shit you do. I, I want to say the things I want to say. Why is it so hard? And he was just like, look, man, you you want to walk the uh, the righteous road in any way? He's like, you're gonna take a lot of hits, man. He's like, I've I've sacrificed money. I've burnt bridges. I've sacrificed gigs. And he told me the story of like a guy at a club coming up to him and saying, Patrice, can you not say cunt tonight in that one joke? Or, or I think it was that. And, uh, and he was like, no, I'm, I'm doing that bit. And he's like, and I explained to the guy, it's not about me needing to do that joke. It's about me letting you know that you can't tell me I can't do it. Because right. once I let that door open a crack, right. it's going to swing open. Yeah. And I, was, I remember yeah. talking to him. And he, and he was like, he goes, come on, Joe, you know that fucking joke that you're talking about is, you know, Very come on, insightful. man. He's like, you know, you're trying to piss people off. And he's yeah. like, you don't mean that. Right. And I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. I don't mean it. it. Whatever. But I just remember being like, this fucking guy has such a firm grasp on what the sacrifice is. Mm-hmm. That's the difference to me between him and a lot of other people. A lot of people, it's like the, the saying, everybody wants to die, but nobody wants to go to heaven. Right. I mean, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. I just agreed it's with like, the wrong saying. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. You asshole. I'm just, he's, that's the worst. I'm just trying to get him. We're, we're, just keep going. <laughs> that's that's the no, we know that's what Bobby believes. I should have yeah. never asked what the joke was. Right. <laughs> right. But he, he got it. Yeah. He was like, okay, if I want to get to this holy ground, I get <laughs> Get what it's going to take well, to do it. And a lot of guys don't. A lot of guys are rebels, and then they go, "Why the fuck won't anybody fucking book me?" And it's like, dude, because you're up there talking about fucking babies or whatever yeah. you're doing. It's like you got to take the hit, dude. Well, you know, he. The best thing he ever said to me. I talked about it uh, on on O and A today. Back in Nick's, back when he was sitting with his discman, he was listening to B I G before anybody even knew who Notorious B I G was. He had like a bootleg, you know, out of a trunk version that he was letting me listen to. And I was bumming out about something. And two people taught me about truth. Bobby Kelly and Patrice O'Neill. But the quote that Patrice said, Bobby and I, that's, it's a different story altogether. But Patrice, was, he just looked at me and goes, you can't fuck with the truth, man. If you walk in as the truth, even if it's the bad truth or you know, fucked up truth or good truth, joy, truth, whatever, nobody can fuck with you. Yeah. You live in the truth. And I was like, I need to start doing that more. I was not doing that. I was not a person who was present. And I felt like Patrice was always present. You know what I mean? Some people like you talk to and they're like, they can sit without any kind of nervous movement or right. anything, you know, they can just kind of be in a moment. And that's off-putting to some people and even to me at first. But the more I saw it, the more I wanted to be like that. Or I could just be this, you know, everything around you, around Patrice could settle down because he was that kind of strong center of truth. Well, how many guys did you see? How many guys, how many comics have you ever seen with that Carlin prior energy? that go out there with opinions and edgy, mm-hmm. edgy, edgy material that don't move. Yeah, I, Carlin yeah. and Pryor paced around. Oh, they right. paced around. And they're the two greatest ever. And they paced around. Patrice would just either stand in one place or sit and still have that same exact, like, I'm, I'm playing for 10,000 people right now energy. Right. When I first, you know? yeah, when I first moved here in 07, I used to go, he was at Stand Up New York like every other weekend, sold out shows. And he used to just sit down and put his soda on that bar and then just fucking go. And like you were saying, he wouldn't even move, no energy. He would just, and just crush. Huh? You, know, you know what, Patrice? I listened to, they played a bit on ONA today off his new album called Mr. P. And it's available, no, it's on, on, iTunes, it's, yeah. it's available on iTunes right now. It's a pre order. Uh, the money is being divided between his, his, his wife. And his mother, right? So, um, and, and if you're like, well, it's not going to him, it's going to them. His manager set it up. the The deal is done. I believe I wouldn't be fucking sending you there if I didn't think if, right. if I didn't know for a fact right. it was legit. And there's going to be benefits. There's going to be other ways for you to help the family. So, but that's one of them. Um, but the bit was about this is what Patrice is. He like I always say this, and I try. I'm trying to get there now. Where I'd rather have a crowd listen to me than laugh. You know what I mean? Because if you get them to listen and laugh, they're going to remember your shit. Because they're going to internalize it because they actually affected them in their lives. They related to it somehow. When there's, there's some people that you make people laugh, but they'll be like, oh, that bit with the thing with the... 
uh, and you'll be that guy. Oh, the, you, the, the guy that does the... But if you say something that somebody listens to and relates to, mm-hmm. then with that bit you did about, you know, Jesus or whatever, that, that really, man, I feel the fucking same way because... And there's a story behind that. You know what I mean? Right. I always love that. It was like... It's like the essence of, like, when I went to AA, the reason why it worked for me is because I was hearing people say the same shit that I went through, relating, like, oh, my God, I, I, can I talk to you? Because I went through that. Right. I li- you know what I mean? He had that, that, that same shit. He would come out and, and start talking about a subject, and all of a sudden you're listening, and it's not funny. You're not laughing. You're not laughing. You're supposed to be laughing every 30 seconds with a stand-up comedian. Laugh, 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 laugh. Especially from Boston, you know what I mean? That's the way we were taught. He figured out a way, slowly building, and all of a sudden, when that punch, when he wanted to, when that fucking, it was like a slow fuse. It was just going, and all of a sudden, it was like a grand finale. He would hit that fucking punch, and his voice would go, and you, this motherfucker, what the fuck? And start Mm. hitting you with the punch, and then you could hear the audience just fucking, oh, my. And it wouldn't stop. It was like, holy fuck laughs. Like, what the fuck? How do you get those laughs? When I watched him one time, I watched him from the side stage of in New York. It looked like grenades were being tossed out because it was like, boom, and like it would just explode into the room. Yeah, he really. (laughs) He made made you want to quit. I was, I, did you shake his? Did you were you shaking your head at his grenades analogy? I, look, you did kind of a little bit. Yeah. I know you did. Fuck uh, off! <laughs> I, I look. I didn't say anything. I let it go. Joe's the one who picked up on it because he went like this. He goes, "It's like grenades." Or the, the, Bobby turns to me and he goes, "Like that." <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I just didn't like. Uh, the, he, I got with grenades. Yeah. Boom! But when he smiled, boom. you saw a giant rainbow just leave his chest and <laughs> and connect with the uh, crowd, right? Yeah. Woo. The, yeah. the most, je- literally, the most jealous I ever was of a comic ever in my career was I saw him affect two people, three people, in a way that I've never seen a comic affect anybody. He, it was right after the tsunami happened, and it was at Caroline's. He was headlining. He comes out on stage. He sits down. He goes, uh, fucking, you know, the tsunami, man. I mean, I mean God damn. I mean, I guess I feel bad for the people and shit, you know. I don't want to see anybody die, but it didn't look that... F- didn't look that fucking bad to me. It looked like if you just lifted up your pants, you would have been fu- right, dude. <laughs> fucking right. <laughs> right? You're like, yeah. you're like, holy shit! Is he really doing? He's opening with this, <laughs> right? Yeah. I swear to God, I'm like, I gotta run to the bar and get a drink and, w- and settle into this. I run to the bar. Three people from England walk out of the room. That fucking kind bleh, motherfucker, right? They're cursing Petrie's name. First five minutes of the show, they sat at the fucking bar for two hours and waited for him. That's how mad they were. They walked out in five minutes and were so mad that they waited for two hours at the bar. And then he finally came out and they were screaming at him. And he's just doing that Patrice shit. You know, like all that shit. Yeah. The calmer he gets, the more angry they get. Yeah. And then he just goes, this is why English people is the worst motherfucking immigrants in the world. <laughs> not, and he not goes, immigrants. <laughs> he goes, y'all come here. Y'all want to be us. You want to be us so bad, but your country stinks, right? <laughs> and dude, literally smoke coming out of their fucking ears. They had to be drug out of the club by security. <sighs> They had to be dragged out of the club, and Patrice was begging for them to stay. He's like, no, let them stay. This is fun. This is fun. And as they're being dragged out of the club, the woman, like, shook loose for a second, and she stomps her foot, and she points down the stairs of Caroline's at him, and she goes, you're an embarrassment to America. Like that. And I was like, wow. I'm so jealous of this guy right now. Mm-hmm. Like, if you can strike a chord like that with an audience member, that whole chain reaction of event, like, yeah. You f- you're really fucking doing something up there, man. Jesus Christ. He made me feel like <laughs> shit every time I saw him. Made me feel like shit every time I saw him. As a comic, he made me feel like garbage. Because he would fucking... He would retire from comedy. You know, I mean, it sucks you weren't here. You know what I mean? It's, you're on the, the, uh, the West Coast. Yeah. But, you know, he would retire, dude. He just wouldn't come and... 
just wouldn't show up. It's like, now nah, I got nothing to say. Mm. And all of a sudden, something would happen in the news, some tragic shit, something fucked up, some type of riot, something fucking, uh, you know, crazy, catastrophic fucking world event. And he'd have to come out yeah. and talk about it because he all of a sudden he got an opinion and he had to, fu- he all of a sudden he had to come out, show his face at the clubs to get on and make people laugh at the shit that's happening. Right. And then you'd see him and you'd be like, what? The yeah. fuck? And imagine... No, I said this to Bird today, too. Me and Billy were talking about it. He was lazy. One of the laziest motherfuckers I know. I remember when I first moved to New York, he gave me the greatest advice ever. Because I was waking up and I felt guilty because I had, I know I had no job anymore. You'll feel the same way, monster voice. <laughs> After... When you quit, you're going to be like, what am I doing? Am I should be doing something. Should I? He gave me the best advice ever. He goes, motherfucker, I worked hard for seven years to be lazy. I worked my ass off to get to the point where I don't have a shit job. And I don't, don't feel guilty. Sleep until two. Fucking wake up, get some food, go back to bed, and then go do a set at night and stay up until five trying to bang some pussy, go home, and do it all over again. Because that's what we do. That's what you worked your ass off for in Boston to fucking be able to do that. And I was like, holy shit. But and on the other level, he was lazy. Imagine, I've never seen him with a pen, never saw him with a notebook, a recorder. He didn't have... Imagine if he tried. Um, this guy was the funniest guy, in my opinion, my humble opinion, funnier than any of them out there right now. Yeah. Funnier than fucking Louis, yeah. Rock, fucking Gervais, any of them. I, I'm a fan yeah. of mm-hmm. Patrice. If, you, if I had a choice, I'd watch him first because he oh, was yeah. lovable. Enjoyable, fucking angry, funny, fucking, he made you think. He was just so honest. And it was a joy to fucking watch him. One of my favorite, is my, one of my favorite comics of all times. Absolutely. And imagine if he tried. Imagine if he fucking wasn't lazy. Yeah. He would be, oh my fucking God. Yeah, it was, he was, you know, it was, it was, it was Richard Pryor shit. It was like, you watch a guy like Patrice. And it's the same way you feel when you watch a guy like Richard Pryor where you go, it's okay to talk about pussy if I can do it that good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if I can talk about... A, like, you'd watch those... They do jokes about, like, dogs. And you'd be like... You, and most of us, the first inkling would be like, I'm not writing a joke about a fucking dog. Like, what? what? Like, that, everybody said everything about dogs already. Yeah. And you watch somebody like Patrice talk yeah. about something like that, and you'd just be like... Oh wait, no, no, you can talk about that shit. It's like, yeah, you know, it's that difficult uh, thing when you're talking about, you know, how can I be, the, how can I, how can I really express myself and be truthful without that weird psychological thing that goes like, where you fuck with yourself, going, but like, but who am I to think I really have something to say? Right. You know, where like I've talked myself out of that, and I remember Patrice uh, being an example where I had a bit. When I was doing uh, this, my second SNL hosting, they would have you. Oh, I, Lauren wanted me to open with stand up, and I had a bit about suicide. And I'm like, I want to open up with this bit, and the network didn't want me to open up with it. I was really appreciative that uh, Lauren stepped up and was like, "Do you want to do the bit?" I'm like, "I really do." And he's like, "I'll I'll protect you. Do the bit." And it was a v- really edgy bit. It was it was it was that thing about like you know when somebody commits suicide that you know, you always you. There's always that first person who wants to be the person to tell you, oh. you know, so they call and they kind of like, did you hear about so-and-so? And they're kind of privately, secretly hoping you're going to be like, no, what? And I go, <laughs> and then the bit is like, uh, you know, killed himself. And then, of course, because we're all fucking freaks, your, your follow-up is like, how do you do it? <laughs> and, and, and so I did this bit, and it goes on and on, and I got so much, you know, kind of like backlash and grief from it, but I was proud that I did it because then I got emails from... People that it impacted, like, you know, a couple of kids that wrote me and were like, my parents don't know I'm dealing with so-and-so. And so it's the same thing. More people ostracized me because of it. More people probably gave me shit. But the few people that it connected with and it mattered with, mm. it for the rest of my life, I'll be able to say, I've done, you know, I'm not the most meaningful guy on stage. I've always looked at comedy as more of kind of like escapism and a bit of like a closing the doors on right. some of the, you know, maybe heaviest of, of top, you know, political stuff but for me doing something like that made me feel like wow that's what patrice probably feels like every set yeah the whole time 
There's no like whimsical. Hey, here's a silly. And here's the thing though, too. People laughed when you did it. Yeah. Yeah. People fucking that. that the fact that's our job. That's why you can't fuck with us. That's why you can't fucking come down on us for making fun of gays or blacks or fucking, uh, you know, uh, fucking anything. Tsunamis, suicide.